On May 17, 2014, Admiral McRaven addressed the graduating class of the University of Texas at Austin. He shared the 10 principles that he learned as a Navy SEAL during his training that helped him overcome the challenges of that training as well as uh, be able to have a very successful naval career and personal life as well. His commencement speech on YouTube actually has over 10 million views. And if you haven't had a chance to watch that yet, I really encourage you to do so. It's really, really encouraging. In fact, I'm, I'm glad John Gualdoni's here today. The way I found out about this particular speech and what I'm going to share with you about his book, Make Your Bed, Little Things That Can Change Your Life and Maybe the World, this was actually a book that John requested as he ret was retiring from the vestry. I usually get retiring vestry members something. So John, thank you. Um, great, great read. And he shares in this book his first principle about the importance of making your bed at the beginning of your day. He shares each day upon rising, he had had to make his bed, being certain the corners were tucked in, the pillow properly placed, and the extra blanket just so. Why did a SEAL training warrior have to perform such a mundane task at the beginning of his grueling training? He said it was because something, it was something he did, and whatever the day held, whether it be successful or a failure, he would come back to a bed that he had made. And he begins to share not only with this principle, but the principles that follow, that doing the right thing in life matters. And the choices that we make matter very powerfully. And so I would invite you as we reflect on that opening story that I shared with you, uh, what does it look for, like for you and me to do the right thing in the kingdom of God? Well, if you look today along with me at the gospel lesson today, you'll notice in there that Jesus has some very specific ideas about what the right thing looks like. In fact, if you read the scriptures, you'll notice that whenever Jesus calls something blessed, that would be the right thing. Um, whenever Jesus says, you're not blessed, that would be the thing you don't want to be doing. And so Jesus is very clear in here today, and I, I love it when he's that way. He says here very simply, blessed are you who are poor now, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. And then he goes on to talk about when people hate you and revile you because of his name, because that's how they treated the prophets of God. And one of the things that you and I need to realize that at the very beginning as Jesus is sharing the gospel here today, when he's talking about the poor, he's not so much talking about those who are materially poor as he's talking about people that are poor in spirit. He's not talking so much about people that are physically hungry. He's talking about people that are spiritually hungry. And he's saying to people that are like that, blessed are you for you will be filled by the things that I have to give you that will be spiritually nourishing to your souls and to all of your life. In fact, we read in the gospel lesson today that people are coming from all over the place because they've heard about Jesus. And as you read the gospel lesson today, one of the things that we read about is the reason why they're coming to him. There is literally power that is going out from him. Um, and so people are coming to be healed physically, uh, some of them are probably coming because they've heard about his miracle with the fishes and the loaves, and they're probably hungry. They want the lunch for the day or the special meal that's going to happen. Um, some of them are coming because they need deliverance from evil, and they're being delivered. And so what we see in Jesus is an embodiment of what it means to live the Spirit-filled life. And in fact, that is the life that Jesus is calling every one of his disciples to live as well. You know, the reality for you and me as believers is that our lives are to be filled with his power and with his presence to the extent that there is healing that is happening in people around us. There is provision that is taking place, not only in our lives, but the lives of those around us. Does it always happen that way? Not always, but it happens often enough. And so we see in, in this story today that Jesus is talking about the poor of spirit. And the poor of spirit will know their need of God. They know that they need God. Uh, let me share with you a little secret. Every human being actually needs God. 
It's just not all of them know it. Uh, in fact, some of them go to great lengths uh, to prove that they don't. Uh, but the reality is that, is that all of us need God. Uh, and we all have a hunger in our lives. And we have a hunger not only physically, but we have a hunger spiritually. It's a very normal part of being a human being. We have certain goals, we have certain drives, we have certain needs. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's just a matter of how we're going to have those things fulfilled in our lives. And we hear in the gospel lesson today people that are making the right choice. The disciples. The people that are coming to Jesus to be healed or delivered. These are people who are choosing Jesus as the source for their fulfillment. As the one who is going to satisfy their hunger. As the one who's going to be their source of spiritual strength. And so there are other people in the world at that time and also in the time in which we live who, for whatever reason, make other choices. Some people may choose drugs or alcohol or gambling or whatever you can fill in the blank for an addiction. Some people may choose a different kind of philosophy and whatever it might be. But the truth that we celebrate, not because we are better than anybody else or because we're aloof above anybody else, but we simply celebrate what we believe the Father did from the beginning of time. God so loved the world that he gave his son. That's what we affirm, very simply and very powerfully. And in the gospel lessons that we read today, we see the truth of the Messiahship of Jesus Christ. We see the truth of the anointing upon his life. Uh, after Lent and into Easter, we will celebrate the reality that he is risen from the dead, the first among many, and that because of that, he is the anointed of the living God. In fact, we heard in the second lesson today that if he has not risen from the dead, our faith is, to, is in vain. We are to be pitied the most above all people, and yet we believe it is true because he is the son of the living God. And so the poor of spirit know they, their need for God. They know that we need his love. We know that we need his presence. We know that we need his graces. And by the grace of God, we come to the person of Jesus Christ because we believe that he is the Messiah of the living God. And he is the one whom God has approved and whom God has anointed and through whom God has saved the world. Glory to God. And so we give thanks for that. We're not ashamed of that. We're not embarrassed by that. We don't try to keep that private. We share that with love and with joy and with grace with everyone that we meet. So let me ask you a question here this morning. Do you know your need for God? I mean, do you know that in the depth of your heart? And is your need for God transforming your life? You see, I believe we have certain hungers and desires in our heart for a reason. And each one of us are unique and different for a reason. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, the Lord brings unity by the Spirit in the midst of diversity. You might have one kind of hunger for a certain thing. I might have a hunger for another thing. Uh, we can see that in our physical appetites and our spiritual appetites as well. We're all created unique and different. The question for, for me and for you here today is, how are you satisfying that hunger for the struggle that you're going through, for the pain that you have, for the relational needs that you have. How are you satisfying that hunger? Are you medicating it? Or are you going through the pain by God's grace and entering into relationship? Um, as you have been blessed in your life materially, are you focusing in on the material blessings in the financial area in your life? Are you acknowledging that all things come from God, that he is your source and provider, are you surrendering it before the throne of the Lord Jesus Christ to be a faithful steward to him? You see, those simple choices make all the difference in the world. And so you may know your need for God, but you and I, one of the most important things that we need to begin to do is allow our need for God to transform our life. And our hungers, the areas where you and I struggle with addiction and attaching to things that we know in our conscience, God is saying to us, that is the wrong direction. <laughs> uh, that is not blessed. Whoever does that is not blessed, and that would be you right now. 
You need to move in a different direction. And in case God has been speaking to you about that particular direction for 15 or 20 years, you're not alone. (laughs) There is a congregation full of people that are going through that right now. I can guarantee you that, all right, including myself. But you see, that's the call. The call is to keep getting up, to keep confessing that sin, and to press in that God would be the one who meets that hunger once and for all. And won't that be a glorious day? Won't that be an awesome moment? Won't that be a reason for some of you to dance who don't really dance too much in your life right now? Right? So what does it look like in closing for you and me to make our bed spiritually? Again, for Admiral McRaven, making his bed at the beginning of his day in SEAL training was a requirement. It was part of what the trainers and his instructors look for. And the reason also why making his bed at the beginning of the day was it was good military order and discipline. One of the things that you know is that if you're in the military, they look for that kind of things, especially an inspection of your uniform, of your bed, of everything that you do. Because if you're unable to maintain good order and discipline in these simple areas of your life, you will certainly be unable to maintain it on the battlefield. And that's what they're looking for. They're looking for the little things to be indicative of the big things. And the same is true of the spiritual life. And so what does it look like for you and me to make our bed spiritually? Well, I want to make a suggestion about that. All of you are coming up with different ideas, and that's great. But I just want to suggest to you one particular area that would be incredibly powerful. Start your day, and I mean at the beginning of the day, Start your day with nourishing your spirit with light. Whatever you have been through, whatever the night was like before, wherever you are in your journey at this particular point, start the beginning of your day by nourishing your spirit with light. Um, Well, again, Florida is a great place for that. You can do that naturally, of course. Just go out and go for a walk in the morning. That's great. But I'm talking about nourishing your life spiritually. And one of the ways you can do that is to read the light, the Word of God. Now, I'm grateful for all of you that are in devotionals and different things like that, but there is something powerful about getting it straight from the source. We're all about organic these days, aren't we? Get to the organic Word of God. This is the source. This is it right here. Old Testament and New Testament. You need to be in this every day of your life. It says in the Psalms, you know, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. A lamp that helps me know my next step and a light that gives me direction for things that are to come. It says in 2 Timothy 3.16 that all scripture is inspired by God and profitable succinctly for our spiritual lives. (laughs) We need to read this word. We need to be in it daily. As you open up this book and you begin to read it, you're not just reading a Harlequin romance. You're not reading a James James Michener fictional novel, although those are great things. But this is the living word of God. This has spiritual power like no other thing in the world. It's said in John 1, we read this just a little while ago, in the beginning was the word. That would be Jesus. And the word was with God, and the word was God. And I shared with you how that was a play on words, logos. And it was also talking about the very word of God. Why do you think that when Satan came to tempt Jesus, his response to him was the word of God? Why do you think that was? Do you think that was just a coincidence? Do you think he just thought, well, this is what I'll do today? No, it's because Jesus is the Word of God. And it's because the Word of God is full of light. And it's because the Word of God always trumps darkness. The Word of God always trumps Satan. The Word of God always leads us in the right direction. So where do you start? Start with John 1, the Gospel of John. It's one of the easiest gospels in the whole Bible. It's the most spiritual. And then you can go back to Matthew, Mark, and Luke. 
After you read a chapter of John, go to the Psalms. They're great, especially if you're going through a low time or a high time. David just lays it all on the line. And then sometimes when nobody else is in the house, scream out loud the Psalms, make it your prayer. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why is Joe going through this? Why me, Mary? Why am I going through this? You can put your name in the scripture because it is yours. This is your book. This is your light. This is your empowerment. And I want you to know, you know how you eat during the day? You're going to eat today, right? Some of you are thinking about that Sunday brunch, right? You're going to drink today. You're, gonna, you're looking forward to that meal. Man, I love to eat. I don't know about you, but it's one of my favorite things to do in life. But you know what? Your spirit is famished because you have not been eating the word of God. You need to be in this book every day. This is your spiritual Wheaties, your spiritual organic food. It is the whole deal. But you need to start here. You need to read this word every day. If you do not do that, I just don't think you'll make it spiritually. There's just no way, especially today. Aren't going to make it. So I encourage you. I encourage you to get into the word. I've, I've read this. I've studied this for decades. I do it every day. And, and I want, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. When I open up things I've read and I've studied and I've sentenced and I've wrote about and all this kind of stuff, there are still moments in my life where I'll open up that same text and I'll read a word or I'll read a sentence. And it's like, boom. <laughs> God just grabs me by the side of the head and says, did you see that before? I never saw that before. And it's like my eyes open up and it's like the light opens up to me, a whole new reality. That's how this works. God speaks to you through this word. God has been wanting to feed you his light. God has been wanting to speak to you. You just haven't shown up for the appointment. And I want to encourage you to show up for the appointment. And as you do that, pray the word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Lord, would you, would you please guide me today by your word through the spirit and through your scripture about this decision with my loved one? What should I do about this decision with my finances? What does your word have to say? Lord, would you please guide me? Would your word be a lamp unto my feet? I need to make this decision right now. I have a future decision to make. Would it be a light to my path? God loves it when you pray that way because you're using his word to remind him about what he said to you. And it's a promise. Every word in here is a promise. So begin to receive the promises that God has spoken to you and pray them. Pray in the light. Pray these promises for, your, for yourself. Pray these promises for your family. Pray in love. Pray in peace. Pray in joy. Pray in grace, especially when you don't feel like it. That is the most important time to be praying for that way. We pray for healing, not for those who are well. We actually pray for healing for those who are sick. Hello? That's what's happening in the gospel today. And that's how we're supposed to pray, pray in faith. One other thing about your prayer time. Would you spend about a minute just keeping your mouth shut and your mind shut and just be quiet and listen to God? Don't you find it incredibly rude when you're actually supposed to be in a conversation and you've spent all this time listening to what the other person has to say and they ask you how you're doing and you're about ready to say something and then they have to go? Don't you find that incredibly rude? I kind of get a message out of that and I don't like the message I'm getting, but I'm getting a message. There are many believers who send that message to God every day of their lives. They send up the requests, but they don't ever take even a moment to listen to his response or to listen what's on God's heart for you or for your family. Spend some time listening to God. And then finally, share the light. You've been hearing a lot about this this year already. And it's because I really believe, well, that's been a message all the way along, but it's a really important message for this year. Get your light out there. Share the light with people that are around you. Be a difference in the lives of people that are around you. People need the light. People need the presence of Jesus and the presence of the, presence of the Holy Spirit through you. 
And as you're open to reading the light and praying with the light and sharing the light, the light of the Lord will fill you even more and more to overflowing. You will begin your day centered in the Lord and whatever your day brings, you will have more power, more grace, more anointing, and more love to live out your life. Make your bed. Make your bed in the morning. And the way you do that spiritually is begin your day in the light.